My name is Wave Weir. I am the owner of Wave Fiber Mill, a semi-worsted spinning mill being set up in northern Ontario near Perry Sound. The theme of this presentation is building community one thread at a time, because that is exactly what is happening with this endeavor. There are several other small mills already functioning here in the province, but the demand for their services are certainly outstripping their ability to keep up. Current fiber producers are hard-pressed to find mill services within the province, much less close enough to home to minimize the cost and increase carbon footprint that transportation causes. The need for processing facilities, machinery, skills, and labor is dire. Wait times can be prohibitive for farmers looking for processing their fleece. There's an overall increase in sustainable, responsible, locally produced consumer goods, including clothing. A public educated on the benefits of a local food industry are now using this information to inform themselves of the provenance of their clothing. Here we are setting up a fiber processing and weaving mill, providing service to fiber farmers and meat farmers, allowing them to use what has often been waste due to restricted processing options. The mill would provide cleaning, carding, spinning, roving, felt bats, bumps, and yarn. The loom capacity will provide a volume and quality of yardage from locally farmed fiber that is unique in the province. Our objectives are, one, to provide mill service to fiber farmers, supporting the development of fine fiber breeds, as well as realizing income from a meat byproduct. Two, to provide socially, environmentally, and economically responsible choices to an increasingly demanding consumer. Three, to provide full-time, year-round employment in our district. Four, to provide locally grown materials to local artisans and designers. Five, to retail a line of high-end clothing and accessories branded to the Perry Sound District. Six, to encourage and promote the works and services of other entrepreneurs under the brand. Seven, to create a draw to the area. And eight, to educate the public on issues surrounding our fiber shed. This presentation will introduce you to our business and those that are making it happen. There are two directions that the mill operations will take. One is to provide processing service to mid-sized fiber producing farms. The other is to purchase fiber from Ontario farms to put into product. The farm is where it all starts. When looking for fiber to put into our product for sale, we look for farms with responsible animal husbandry. Those striving to implement practices that regenerate vegetation, return fertility to the soil, and sequester carbon. It is now clear that properly managed ruminants or grazing animals are well suited to do such things. As we find our footing, we are developing active relationships with select Ontario farms who are interested in adding value to their farm production by developing product uniquely from their own fleece. One example that we are presenting today is the Wan family farm in Powassan, Ontario. The farm totals about 900 acres, raising about 100 head of beef and a flock of 5 to 600 sheep for lambs. Their animals remain outdoors year-round, improving overall health, quality of fiber, ease of lambing, and decreasing the total carbon emissions by keeping the manure on the fields. The sheep are checked before lambing and any of the ewes at risk are brought to the barn. A major part of their care and production falls to the skill of the guard dogs. The flock is made up of a mix of 10 to 12 breeds chosen with an eye for hardiness, health and optimal meat production. The Wands are interested in producing a line of high quality value added products that come from their own sheep. Our wool production 
Um, it, it's to be honest, it's a bit of a, um, a, a byproduct or, or a second secondary thing that happens with, with our land production. But regardless, we need to we need to take the wool off the sheep and and uh, and do something you know high, high value as possible that one time. And um, and so what we've we've done in the past we. And again, now we haven't done a great job at sorting our wool and trying to keep uh, keep the quality up. But um, with Wave kind of coming into the picture, it um, it gives us an opportunity to do a better job at our wool and, and get some more revenue that way. Um, you know, anywhere where we can drive some more revenue certainly is a bonus to the to the farm business. And uh, and, and like I I said earlier too, that the the breeds that we use for our land production are super great for. Um, you know, for uh, for wool production or the wool quality, but um, I think we can sort of, you know, as as the as time progresses, we can work on improving that quality while maintaining our, our land production too. Um, so it's um, it's kind of a work in progress and and something that we should uh, should and will devote more energy to now that we have someone you know local that can process process wool and and, and purchase wool. We will now take you through the mill to introduce you to the equipment and what it does. While preparing for this presentation, we were cleaning, wiring, calibrating, and testing each piece. We expect to be in full production by the time you are actually viewing this presentation. The bales of fleece that we receive from the farms are first weighed when they enter the mill. An example of raw skirted fleece weighed and ready for picking, and a block of fleece that has been through the picker already. The first machine that the fleece encounters is the bear claw picker. The fleece is broken apart, separating the fibers from each other, and blown into a small room, allowing much of the vegetable matter to fall to the floor. We use mechanical means and our wash system to remove vegetable matter. No harsh chemicals are used to burn off vegetation, allowing the wool to maintain softness and vitality. You can see where the picker got its name, the bear claw. We call it Yogi for short. Our wash train is very unique in North America. It was built by the previous owners, Shirley and Richard Opry. It consists of three tanks with a roller system and conveyor between each tank. The wool goes into the first tub, is in there five or six minutes, goes through the rollers into the second, again being there about five or six minutes before passing to the third tank, and then rolled out, ready for the drying rack. After drying on stacked racks, the fleece is put through geranium, our opener or blender. Further separation and any blending of color or fiber varieties happens here. Our most modern machine is the Rando Feeder. As the name suggests, this machine uses a vacuum to evenly feed the fiber into the carter. Everybody knows that the carter is Heather's favorite piece of machinery. Cardi, as she is affectionately known, is the heart of the mill. Without a good workhorse as a carter, you cannot produce that much fiber. She was made in 1925, and we look forward to a gala event to celebrate her 100th birthday in 2025. From the carter, the wool passes through a roving deck. This is where the fiber is formed into a loose, rope-like structure called roving, fed through the top of the coiler, and as the name suggests, is coiled into a large can or drum. From the carter, the fleece can also be wrapped around a drum to form bats. The cans from the coiler are placed behind the pin drafter. Several strands of roving are gathered together to go through each of the four heads. The resulting thin stretched combed rope of fiber is then called sliver. From the pin drafter, the cans of sliver are moved to the far side of the spinning frame, brought up over top poles and down through the front mechanism, which stretches and twists the fiber at different rates to create the type of single yarn that we are striving for. 
wound onto bobbins that will be then used as singles or moved onto the twister for plying. Here we can create two, three, or four ply yarns. From the multiple bobbins of the spinner, we then have a single bobbin of plied yarn off the twister. Once plied, the yarn will be taken to the cone winder. As we see, it's being cleaned and prepared for operation. We're told that this is a very fast, efficient, and lovely machine to work with. For the home knitter, we will be winding onto skeins with a simple skein winder. There are many reasons to choose natural fiber and an infinite number of qualities available to be considered depending on end use. Natural fiber is simply that, natural, evolved over millennia to provide the protection that we need to live on this planet. It can be from a plant or animal. It returns to the earth, completing its life cycle to replace what it took to produce itself. Animal fiber can come from sheep, alpaca, goat, llama, rabbit, camel, muskox, horse, etc., even dog. Domestic animals like sheep, mohair, goat, and alpaca need to be sheared annually, a process that literally can take minutes by a trained shearer. Plant or bast fiber using the stalks of woody plants is equally as varied. Flax that produces linen is well known, but hemp, nettle, milkweed, jute, bamboo, all are used. Cotton, also a plant, comes from a ball or seed pod that opens. Silk is produced by a worm forming its cocoon. Flowers, stems, roots of other plants are used to dye fabric into color. For our designs, we use fleece in a wide range of colors straight from the animal and are also developing colored fabric choices using natural plant dyes. Many people still hold the belief that wool is stiff and picky and difficult to care for. Nothing could be further from the truth. Each breed and even each individual animal can give you an infinite selection of different qualities. If you want soft, silky, next-to-skin garments, you choose fleece that is fine and soft. For a sturdy outer garment, you look for a coarser fiber or one suitable for felting. For upholstery, insulation, quilt bats, etc., you look for the fleece that is strong, smooth, and tough. Few people are literally allergic to wool, but are usually reacting to a coarse fiber that scratches the skin or the harsh processing chemicals used in large production facilities. Studies are also showing that ruminants, grazing animals, properly managed on rotational pastures, actually sequester more carbon than they use and play an integral role in revegetating areas of desertification caused by human abuse. This is very encouraging as we are looking for solutions to balance the harm that we humans have caused on this planet. When buying raw fleece from Ontario farms to be used in our end products, we search out farms that practice this responsible husbandry, allowing sheep to be sheep and putting more back than is being taken. The mill is a semi-worsted operation, providing us with the ability to spin a broad selection of fleece lengths into a full range of yarn types. We will have product available from each stage of production roving, sliver, and bats for hand spinners, felters, and quilters. Fine singles, two, three, four-ply yarns for knitters and weavers. Felt pieces for crafters. Woven yardage, knit yardage for designers, as well as woven and knit garments and accessories. Our method is to look at everything that we use and consider how we can produce it here using Ontario grown materials. We have a wet felting machine and a needle felting loom, as well as uh, giving us the opportunity to produce a product. We will be teaching both wet and needle felting on our equipment. Some of our first product line includes dresses, coats, shirts, pants, skirts, jackets. 
capes, sweaters, mitts, shawls, scarves, socks, mattress covers, pillows, bags, oven mitts, to name a few. This room will house a loom, a 60-inch IDL, which will give us the ability to weave fabric from our spun Ontario yarn, both for our product and for sale to designers and other artisans. Like hundreds of small villages in Ontario, McKellar, my hometown, once had an active spinning and weaving mill. The sawmill, the center of the economy, stood on the site that is now Minerva Park, using the water flowing through the narrows between what is now McKellar Lake and Lake Manitowabing to power the saws. Behind the sawmill was the wool mill. Because of the rocky terrain, the area was well suited to raising sheep rather than cropping, and one anecdote indicated that the road was put into the village to get the sheep to market. The community of McKellar once held several active businesses, rivaling the size of Perry Sound itself. The village will be celebrating its sesquicentennial in 2023, 150 years since incorporating as a village. To commemorate and celebrate this event, we developed the McKellar Tartan Project. We had discovered that there is an official Mac Keller Tartan, which we used as our influence to design the McKellar 150 Celebration Tartan. Using colors that are available from the fleeces of the Balsam Road Alpaca Farm, Bear Den Alpacas, we are producing a limited edition of only 150 numbered labeled tartan throws to celebrate the 150 years. Soft, luxurious, unique, and hand-woven by Upper Canada Weaving. Once our mill is fully operational, we will be weaving the blankets here on site. The second floor of our facility is set up to house public workshops, sharing skills, ideas, and resources with the community. Basically, anything goes. If there's an interest and or an instructor, we will run a course. Ideas include knitting, various types of knitting, sweaters, socks, uh, mitts, hats, shawls, weaving, needlepoint, hooked rugs, sewing, crochet, mending, lace making, quilting, basket making, candle making, soap making, embroidery, smocking, felting, bookbinding, leatherwork, to name a few possibilities. There are hand looms, knitting machines, and sewing machines, a wet felter, a needle felter, and dye pots, all to be used for teaching and community use. If you are interested in teaching or learning any particular skill, do contact us. It can be for an afternoon workshop or one that is held over several weeks. We are working on putting together a lending library. If anyone has books or knows of others wishing to donate books, please direct them our way. Our first textile festival is being planned for the summer of 2023 to bring people, cultures, and product together. The theme of this presentation is building community, one thread at a time. Basically, we don't stand alone. The mill never has and, and many, many people have been involved in getting it going. But what happens is after it's going, the model that we're putting into place depends on community and feeds community, part of a circle economy. We start with the mill. And here at the mill, there's washing, Spinning, felting, weaving, teaching. The first level of community that we interact with is the farm and the farmer. What we're providing is a service for the farmer. So the farmer growing sheep for meat then has this byproduct that is uh, very underutilized, if, if utilized at all. So we can say, okay, the farmer can come, say they want it washed, they want it spun, they want it uh, woven into fabric, 
um, they want yarn that they can resell at their marketplace. Um, and so we're providing a service to the farm. The other thing that goes the other way is that we're buying from farms. So if they're not interested in providing a, an added uh, value on their farm, they can sell their product to us. So that comes back to us. So then we put it into a yarn, um, uh, felted bats, roving, uh, sweaters, garments, that kind of thing. And that trends the consumer. So we produce product and gives the consumer a choice that to buy something local, sustainable, responsible, uh, environmentally and socially, all of that kind of thing. So the consumer in turn is supporting us. The farmer, to do all that it does, requires workers. The farm interacts with consumers, both for the farm product and now the new product that they've got from their fleeces. To do what we want to do, we are engaging artisans, craftsmen, entrepreneurs, the cottage industries. We are making product, we're spinning product, and then we're having someone here knit that product into a sweater, sew that product into a, a garment, a, a coat. Um, and so that's, again, supporting us. We are also can provide raw material, like yarn, um, roving to go into felt, so things like that, to the artisans and uh, craftsmen in the community. And they, in turn, interact with the consumer, they in turn can go directly to the farm to get what that farmer is selling. They in turn may employ workers at their level. So also involved with the mill, workshops, the teaching. So we are engaging workshop leaders. So they are supporting the mill by teaching, we are supporting them by providing an outlet for the teaching. They are producing skilled artisans and craftsmen from the, the skills that they are teaching. This also comes around directly to the consumer who will learn new skills and then buy from artisans and entrepreneurs that are um, also learning these skills. So along with education, um, teaching, and celebration, we are planning to host Fiber Textile Festival. So what that does, it's product from the mill, the festivals support the mill, people find out about us and who we are, where we are, and what we're doing. It supports the artisans, craftsmen, entrepreneurs of the community. It brings uh, the public into the district, which supports all of the above, <laughs> increases the traffic flow and education. Um, then from here, of course, farmers that are involved, artisans that are involved, consumers that are involved, <laughs> So you're starting to get the picture that uh, we don't stand alone and everything we do here at the mill affects a great number of people. So basically what we are embracing here at the mill is to become an active part in the circle or donut economy. For many, many years and who knows why it started and who knows why it was perpetuated, successful growth was seen as a line going from start to infinity. Why? We don't know. But we do know that that doesn't work. In <laughs> infinity can happen. We can't support that. So what many people are talking about and what the indigenous cultures of the world have always been telling us is to think in circles. So what we are now calling donut or circle economy is where we want everyone inside this section of the circle thriving. So there's no one who's falling in the hole where they don't have basic needs, where they don't have food, where they don't have water, where they don't have clothing. Communities in the circle.
but we also do not do not want anyone outside of that circle because this is what is beyond what our planet can actually sustain. So beyond that is self-annihilation. So basically we are looking at an economy that builds community, builds a thriving community that is within the bounds of nature but be bringing everyone up to a sustainable, comfortable level. There really is a community building this mill. Everywhere we turn, there is someone offering help, furniture, equipment, and even muffins. People like John Cole, who listened to my half-baked new idea and immediately jumped right in to develop our three-year business plan. Without his involvement, I probably would still be dreaming. I would like to introduce you to our core group. Here you see the three of us as we first got possession of our empty building. Heather Darlington, farmer, textile artist, spinner. Myself, Wave Weir in the middle, owner and designer. Peter Robinson, jack of all trades and our everything machine guy. With our intrepid mascot, Pepper. Deborah Livingston Lowe, our yardage designer and hand weaver of Upper Canada Weaving in Toronto. Heather manages mill production. Peter keeps everything going. Otto, head carpenter, jig builder, and general inventor. In the office, making sure all our systems work, is Stephanie. At each critical juncture, someone has appeared. Cam Heavy Equipment Movers out of Ottawa brought the mill equipment to us intact and helped Frosty and Bruce of Georgian Bay Marine unload it into their warehouse. They, in turn, got it all into our building. Croft Welders worked with the Airport Committee to put in the mezzanine. The Airport Economic Development Committee has been very supportive and had invited us to settle here in the first place. Wiring the machines, some almost a hundred years old, fell to Tony Telford's crew at Orser Electric. Devon and friends performed miracles and problems solved throughout. Shirley and Richard Opry, the past owners of Hidden Touch Fiber Mill, compiled, built, and ran this semi-worsted mill for over 15 years. They are guiding us and teaching us their trade. She's running well. <laughs> My sincere thanks to all. We could not have done this without each and every one. We have also received financial support from the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation, Northern Ontario Women's Program, and the Rural Agricultural Innovation Program. Again, we could not have done this alone. Thank you all. We look forward to opening our doors to the public this spring. We are on the site of the Perry Sound Municipal Airport. Easy to find at exit 207 on Highway 400 south of Perry Sound. If interested in being informed of openings, available tours, workshops, festivals, and new product development, visit our website, sign up for the newsletter, or follow us on Facebook or Instagram.